a second or two to get settled before we start our sessions today. So please be patient. All right, welcome back to Ask Me Anything with Expert 2.0, an interactive career succession brought to you by Biomed KL and also our collaborating media partners, Malaysian, Bio Malaysian Biomedical Science Association, My Biomed, Malaysian Bioscience Scholars, and BIOS, CNET UPM, Center of Industrial Relations and Network, and also My BIOS, Malaysian BIOS. Technology Student Association. Also much appreciated for those who, who are joining us today for the first time. Joseph speaking here, your moderator for today's sections. Before we get started, I would like to go for a few housekeeping items so you could know how to participate in today's sections. First thing first, we will collect a database from our audience by launching a quick poll which is going to be done by my, my colleagues who is supporting me behind the screen. Sean, can you launch the poll now? So there are three questions in the load in within the polls. Please select the appropriate response and click submit. Thank you. Next, we, we ask your permission for allowing us for to record today's sections for our internal QC proposal. Also, you will have the opportunity to submit the text questions to today's speaker by typing your questions into the chat box. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation today, and we will collect this and address them during the Q&A sections at the end of today's presentation. Yeah, seeming that is 40% of our audience have responded for the poll. And let's count down for like 30 seconds before we end the poll. Okay. Ten, nine, eight, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, I think we are ready to go. We now closing the flow poll and we let me share the result with everyone. It looks like majority of you has responded uh, biomed or biotech undergrad, which have been best described you. And for the second question, most of you know the MX session through the WhatsApp. And most of you has responded that planning to persuade in biomed or biotech postgraduate in the future. All right, so now let me introduce our speakers. Today's Professor Dr. Sharum Samsudin. Professor Dr. Sharum Samsudin is a senior lecturer at School of Health Sciences, University of Science, Malaysia, teaching molecular biology related courses. And yeah, a very good lecturer of mine as well. Yeah, and back in 2017, he was appointed as a chairman for USM Biomedical Science Program and also the coordinator for UDCAS, USM Rican International Center for Aging Sciences. And in early 2019, he pioneered the, the agreement of strategic collaboration between USM and SOCSO Malaysia that leads to the establishment of cyberdrive robotic rehabil rehabilitation services in Hospital University Science Malaysia. Professor Dr. Sharon Samsudin has various research inter interests and mainly focus on the, 
the molecular biology and epigenetics of cancer as well as aging sciences. Also, he also focused on the application of biotechnology on infectious disease and the nanomedicine. His research group have filled a copyright for the development of rapid detection of influenza viruses back in September 2019. I, th I believe that there, are, there must be mm -hmm. more, a lot more interesting and adventurous life experience throughout the journey by starting as a lecturer, as a researcher, and now is a senior professor in University of Science Malaysia. So without further ado, I'm going to hand the floor over to Professor Dr. Sharum Samsudin, who is going to start today's sharing. Prof, now the floor is all yours. Yeah. Can you hear me, Prof? Yeah, perfect. Can you see me, uh, Joseph? Yeah. Yes, Prof. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Assalamualaikum and a very good uh, evening to everybody, uh, undergraduates, postgraduates, uh, and those who um, embark in this uh, very tough uh, area of science, biomedical, biotechnology, forensics, sciences. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, say thank you uh, very much. Uh, thank you, uh, my appreciation to uh, by MedKL for having me uh, to be one of the uh, <coughs> speaker uh, in this uh, meaningful program. Uh, to me, uh, this is a very good uh, opportunity uh, at least uh, to share with what uh, I had went through in my uh, scientific career that uh, maybe uh, some of you might uh, uh, want to look at and uh, you know have a have a have a have a, have a look. So, uh, <clears throat> you see, when I, I think all of us, I think all of us, when we first um, finish our secondary school and uh, lower secondary, high secondary, <clears throat> most of us, uh, we want to become a medical doctor. You see, because uh, there, you know, like, like me, I'm, I'm a small boy in, in, a, in a very uh, isolated place in, in Kelantan. You know? Macha. The only things that I know is either a nurse or a doctor because you go to the hospital or uh, a policeman or uh, a soldier so, and also a teacher. So th that, that was uh, in, in our mind because we do not know uh, uh, other uh, career path uh, during, during my time. Uh, so I think all of us uh, uh, have in mind that uh, we want to become a medical doctor on the, or, or related to the health science because of their uh, uh, position in this community. Okay. So um, the problem is in, in most of the thing in our life, you see, you, you always cannot get what you want. <laughs> so this, this is life. If you go and speak to any other, uh, every, all of us, even though you can, you, you go and speak to those who manage to put themselves in the medical school and become a doctor, still they have, they have things that is not what they want, but still come to their life. You see? So because we are human, this is the thing. So when I, uh, get a letter saying that uh, you was offered uh, a bachelor degree in biology uh, way back in 1986, 1987. So I, my, my mind was, was a bit blank because uh, I bought a few books already, you know, medical degree books. Uh, human anatomy, uh, you know, the second-hand book from the seniors, I, I, I bought them. Just, I thought that uh, I, I could, you know, put myself in the medical school. So, um, so after I, you know, you cannot change the fate. This is the thing. 
you cannot change the thing. So once I realized that uh, I am not going into the medical school, but instead going into biology school, um, I put myself in the position that I have to get a PhD in biology so that I will be uh, an expert in the area of uh, a medical doctor can appreciate. You see, in 1986 and 87, uh, I think only UM, UKM has the biomedical program. And uh, a few university, uh, UKM and USM, uh, they are having biotechnology. And so I put myself that time uh, that uh, I, it's just like I that insert a chip in my brain that I want to be a, a good biologist. So, um, and again, when you go through to the first year, second year, third year, and the fourth year, it's not as, 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 as an, it's not as easy as you think. It's very hard. You see? So, sometimes I felt, uh, uh, very, you know, it's, it's good for not going into the medical school because if I went to the medical school, I think I can pull on up to the second year, third year, and I'd be kicked out from the medical school because I'm not a good student. I never was a good student. To tell you the truth, I never was a good student. But I am very keen in what I'm doing. That's why when I taught my student, I do not teach only science, but I teach my student how to passion in what they do in life. This is uh, the most important thing that uh, uh, we need to have in our mind. So when I, you know, I finish my, my, my degree, um, well, I, I, I was a student leader uh, in, in the university. Uh, most of the, of the time uh, I spent was uh, in the, you know, dealing with the uh, student problems, the welfare, searching for scholarship for those who didn't get any funding. So most of my time is on that. Uh, uh, the, the, the real study was not really serious uh, until I reached the third year where uh, everybody has to focus on the specialization. And I specialize in biotechnology. Um, in, 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 in USM, we have a system where all the biology students, they have to take the same papers during the first year and the second year. And uh, on the third year, you have to specialize. Either you want to become, you know, you want to major in, in biotechnology or environmental science or entomology and so on and so forth. They have uh, applied science, they have uh, pure science. So uh, I was um, into the biotechnology. And um, that time, um, Steven Spielberg, he, he has this movie, uh, Jurassic Park, the first Jurassic Park. So where a scientist uh, uh, found uh, a very old ancient DNA in, in, in a very deep uh, inside the earth uh, at the North Pole, you know, take out the dinosaur DNA and they engineered that stretch of DNA into the reptilian system and created uh, that Jurassic Park. So, so that story really triggered me because I, 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 I think that, uh, you know, this is, uh, this, this is what I want to do. I think the reason why the God has speared me, you know, skewed me from the medical path is because want to make this thing. So I start reading. So I start reading about books, uh, uh, on the genetic engineering, you know, on the DNA manipulation technology. And uh, in every year, uh, every holiday that I have uh, uh, during the first year until the fourth year, I will go to the B BHEP, you know, the student affairs uh, section, Hardware uh, Plaza. Uh, I ask for a letter to go for optional training. Uh, and one of the officer used to say to me, Shahrom, you just first year, how can you go? You cannot go to the 
uh, industrial training because uh, industrial training is meant for the fourth year uh, uh, student. Uh, if you want to, if you want to go, then you 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 have to be on your own. Okay? So I just find it's okay. I just need a letter to say that I am a USM student only. Uh, I'm not asking. Uh, I have uh, my my. You know, I, I have my own expenses. I will go my expenses. So I I I put already everything in my mind during my first year. I want to learn about DNA, and the second training I want to do about RNA, and the third training I want to do on proteomic, and then on the fourth year I will do my final project. So that that's what I put in my mind. So that's why during the first year I went for uh, optional training, uh, and then second year also uh, I went for industrial training uh, at Mardi, uh, and the third year uh, Mardi called me to go for the, for the training, and then and in the fourth year uh, you cannot go for training during the fourth year because uh, yeah final year project to finish. So uh, most of the time. Um, I spend my holiday uh, in the laboratory. In the laboratory, I still remember uh, where I met uh, uh, Dr. Tan Chong Sen, uh, was my sifu uh, in the RNA laboratory. Uh, he is now retired. I think he's uh, uh, he he has a company uh, dealing with uh, the mushroom. Uh, uh, Tiger milk mushroom, I think, mean, yeah. And he was doing masters that time uh, from the University of Malaya. So I always go uh, on his school motorbike uh, for my nasi <laughs> lemak. So uh, I have to say that uh, the support from the uh, people in the laboratory was very good. And most of my teachers, uh, they are all um, taught me uh, many things. And I didn't learn only uh, science, but I also learned about how to deal with uh, people. Uh, I heard, I mean, I you, you understand what is actually in the lab. You see, when you um, when you expose yourself to the laboratory, then you know whether you are fit to the laboratory life or you are, you know, come see, come up. I mean, if can, you can. If you cannot, also can. If you cannot, also can. Something like that. So that, that is the thing. Uh, so uh, after I finished my, my degree, uh, same problem. That time, I think even my teacher, when I did my SPM at the lower secondary, most of the teachers are actually graduated uh, uh, in uh, engineering and they came back uh, without jobs and then they have to become a teacher. So the same the same case with me when I graduated in 1991, there is no job. Uh, uh, somehow I didn't think about getting a job. My mind just want to uh, pursue masters because there are things that uh, uh, you know blocking my head. I want to see genes blinking in animal or blinking in plants. So you, you want to do something like that. Uh, maybe because uh, I was too uh, too much reading uh, fiction, uh, science fiction too. Uh, but it's okay. It's okay. Uh, this is uh, what uh, we went through and I went through. Uh, and then, uh, but the problem was that time, uh, my CGPA was not good enough uh, for a master's degree. So um, uh, they required me to work first. So, but uh, the problem is, uh, who want to take you into jobs? You see, because uh, unemployment is uh, very, very high at that time. So I, I, I joined a, a research group uh, in, uh, in uh, UPM. And they are looking for somebody who can do molecular biology. They are actually they want to study the molecular genetics of a few uh, genes in uh, in the flight muscle of honeybees. You know the lebatualang. 
you know honey bees is the uh, the bees they have many kind you have uh, apis dosata lebatwala you have apis mellifera which is uh, the normal bees um, and the one that uh, that that, uh, that the organization was uh, searching was uh, on the lebatwala they want to study the pathway of the energy uh, inside uh, the flight muscle of this apis dosata so they required a, a, a scientist to work on this i embarked in that project and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's good exposure for me uh, i worked for the uh, for the group uh, almost a year uh, before um, i uh, was allowed to continue my uh, master's degree so, so that that was a thing uh, that uh, during my uh, early early time, you know, when you work for like eight months or a year, uh, then of course uh, there are company or uh, agency that will take you in. I was very lucky. Uh, some people that say uh, it was uh, uh, the the rizki uh, from the god because you get married. <laughs> so. Because I got married, and then after uh, uh, two weeks, I uh, my marriage, I, I got a, an interview from the GPA, and then uh, somehow the panel uh, they want uh, to find a person to establish uh, uh, to assist the breeding program for the national uh, breeding policy uh, for women at that time in the veterinary services. At that time they call it Jabatan Haiwan, eh? the, the veterinary service. So um, I was taken in uh, by the uh, Jabatan Kesihatan Haiwan at that time, Veterinary Services, and was posted in uh, Institute Biotechnology Haiwan Kebangsaan in Jerantut Pahang in 1993. So that was the place uh, where nobody wants to go. Uh, I went, and uh, my first assignment was uh, to establish uh, a laboratory. You see. There is no laboratory, only buildings. So I developed a laboratory uh, in Jerantu and uh, uh, we uh, uh, established a cytogenetics laboratory and also the chromosome piping facility. Okay, so uh, I will show you one of the slides that I have uh, after this uh, that I went. Uh, that, that, how I, I, I uh, managed to, to, to get everything done. And the good thing about uh, uh, being there is that it's alone. Nobody come in because it's 30 miles in the jungle. So you can do a very uh, peaceful research there. And uh, I, I was, uh, I developed the area. And then the, after that, uh, they offered me a scholarship to go for a master's and PhD. I think that's it uh, for, for now. Joseph? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm pretty sure that Prof. Professor Sharum have, has a very great life experiencing journey all the way until today. Next, Prof, could you share us one or one or two greatest achievement and also one of the most challenging difficulties you ever faced in your career as so far as an academic. Yeah. Okay. Um, to tell you the truth, uh, as a molecular biologist, uh, most of your experience is failure. Because once you strike a success, that is already your master's or PhD. 70% to 80% of your experiment is going to be failure. That is the arts of molecular biology. If you want to become a molecular biology, you have to uh, bear with this uh, uh, system. So as a molecular biology, uh, my uh, greatest achievement is that, was that uh, in, in, in 1994 uh, when uh, uh, I was doing uh, optimization 
uh, of the uh, screening uh, for a syndrome among the ruminants, the, 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 the crossbred, is you know when you do a lot of crossbreeding, you will find a lot of uh, uh, chromosomal abnormalities. And one of the most feared chromosomal abnormalities that time was that what we call Primartin syndrome. Primartin syndrome was actually um, the existence of uh, Y chromosome inside a female uh, that produced a female, which is uh, basically uh, a female uh, in uh, phenotypes, but uh, they are basically uh, fertile, you know, infertile, uh, mandul. So um, the classical way was to do cytogenetics and then you know point out the white chromosome uh, in in the in the slide, but the problems with the ruminants chromosome that uh, most uh, uh, you have sex chromosome and also uh, the, the 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 normal chromosomes. Uh, they uh, the the Y chromosome size and also structure is basically the same, so you cannot differentiate between the Y chromosome and the normal chromosome. So uh, because I was the uh, molecular biologist at that time, I learned about PCR, and PCR was actually uh, that time uh, was uh, uh, very new. Uh, I still remember. Uh, in the laboratory in USM, uh, we learned about PCR. Uh, the, the thermocycler was, uh, you know, using water <laughs> for the water to up and down, the, yeah, you know, to the, to, uh, to anneal and also to denature, denature, uh, denature the to use water. And after that, they go into the calcium technology where the ramping time is, is get is going to be faster and the efficiency of the amplification is better. So I still remember that that, that time. Uh, so uh, we we use PCR. Uh, the story was that uh, uh, you see there was a blackout. There was a blackout, and that blackout happened during the you know when you do PCR, you do PCR and then after that you left the laboratory because uh, uh, you don't know what happened. Uh, when you do the, 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 the PCR, you, you are, most of people, when they do PCR for three hours, they just uh, go out uh, to do other things. So there was a blackout. And then uh, uh, when I came back to the, uh, to the machine, uh, it says, you know, there is a blackout. But uh, I still remember uh, my Sifu used to say to me, Never throw away your negative result. You see? Uh, Prof. Nazlan used to say to me, take all results as a result and report it. So what I did, I follow what he, he was telling me. Just follow SOP, like he was saying. I took the PCR product, you know, the supposed to be failed PCR product because of the blackout and then run the gel and voila you can see a very bright single band very nice Y chromosome specific gene that time so I was like jumping that was my first my first what we call greatest achievement in science in academia after that I quickly go to the machine I check uh, the ramping time and also check the uh, the you know that there, there is a uh, there is a uh, 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 the, the 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 monitor that show you how many cycle it, it went through and when the thing stop and when the thing start again so after I get everything I repeat the experiment based on the failure that night and we managed to establish the optimization of amplification of uh, specific genes for white chromosomes in ruminants at that time. Um, that, that was my first thing. So that's why I'm telling my students, whenever you do experiments, assume that that experiment is very, very 
resourceful and also very very expensive of course i mean pcr is not cheap even the enzyme is very expensive that's what my sifu always tell you know you everything that you put inside that tube is people's money think about that don't waste it so you are not here for, for nothing you are here for mission so i always had that in my mind so this is the thing everybody if you do experiments make sure the logbook everything write it up if you didn't get the result write down what is the possibility that you have done wrong if you get the result what is next do not wait until next week or the day after tomorrow to do the next okay because in our view time is very important that's why i'm telling you 80% of your amplification or your experiments always fail that's why you have to be very patient if you want to become a molecular biologist so that is the first one the second one was when i did my phd um my supervisor is a russian you know russian they 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 only uh, focus on results and russian they are all a very good uh, fundamentalist i mean if they are a biochemist they are really very good biochemists if they are uh, 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 physicists or chemists they are very good physicists or chemists so um we were having problems to show interaction between two uh, molecules uh, the one that i'm looking for i'm working on which is the ctcx is a multivalent uh, 11 zinc finger transcription factors that control so many things in cell and the previous uh, research you know showed that uh, uh, this protein interact with the biggest uh, enzyme in the cell which is the rna pol 2 you know rna pol 2 is the enzyme for uh, rna polymerization okay so uh, they have interaction so what i did was my assignment was to map this interaction and look which part of this molecule uh, actually binds to RNA polymerase? So uh, I produce uh, a lot of mutants. I produce hundreds of mutants throughout my years uh, in, in UK. Uh, and for the for the whole like two 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 and a half years, there is no result. You see, and your scholarship is 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 only three years. So um, what I what what was in my mind, you know, I have in my mind uh, that uh, what if the protein that uh, I'm looking for for this interaction is actually a dimer, because the result is always there. You cannot stop the interaction. So I have in my mind that the protein that we are looking for is actually a dimer that's why you cannot find where the stop point is because it has a dimer and this dimer is intermediating each other between uh, the pole 2 and the uh, ctc so i just run a western you know and then put uh, the antibody and then uh, uh, do some basic, basic fundamental experiment to show to the pull down uh, and acquire uh, and uh, shoot to the supervisor that it is indeed a diamond. So that was, uh, you know, um, my, I think, my two, uh, uh, what we call a greatest achievement. You see, uh, my supervisor was uh, shocked. Because for the past few years, she was she, she believed that it, you know it's uh, it's uh, something which is uh, you know direct direct interaction. You see, we we always been taught in the class that the reaction is in the straight line. I always say that to our student, to my students in my class. We always been taught in the in the textbook in the in the classroom you know during our secondary or uh, higher secondary that the process is always one straight line. Color transcription always in straight line. Translation in straight line, which is wrong. The process is actually very complex. It's crumpled in a very complex place that we call 
nucleus. And then the mRNA came out from the nucleophore into the cytoplasm, searching for uh, you know the ribosome and do what it's supposed to be done. So, so that, that, that's why uh, you see uh, we have to uh, look into that. So that is two achievement. And then uh, my difficulties, yeah? my difficulties, my first difficulties actually uh, to put myself and to make uh, myself uh, into uh, uh, the, the life of my student. You see, uh, if I teach a student, uh, I always teach them not only science, not only the tricks, not only um, the pathways, but only, but but also uh, the way of life, and also the way of uh, uh, how to uh, create your passion in science. That is very my challenges. That. Uh, uh, my, my first challenge in, in my career in academia. But so far, uh, all my students, they are doing very well uh, at, 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 the, uh, I mean, uh, at the moment. Uh, I have no problem with my students. They are doing very well. And my second challenge uh, in, 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 in academia is that uh, to make sure all of my students get a proper job in the market. So uh, you see, uh, this kind of things is very hard because you are dealing with the thing that is supposed to be, you know, uh, you know, nobody can read future. Can you read future? If I can read future, I don't think I will be here. You see? So you cannot read the future. You can only hope for the best and plan for the worst. Okay, Joseph, anything else? Yeah, it's such a tough and meaningful journey, I, I guess. Yeah, it seems that like we need to do more, we need to be more resilient when we are going to do with science. So as since I have talked about doing with science, Prof, could you share us briefly of what are the research opportunities available for MSc or PhD graduates in general? Prof, can you just briefly go through this question so that our audience can have some ideas on the research of pretty available for MSD and PhD graduates. Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, a very good uh, question. Uh, a job opportunity, you see, um, as what I told you, uh, people, you know, company, they will take you, come, you know, into their company if they want to use what you have. It's very easy. You don't need to become uh, an Einstein. Uh, you, you, you don't need to become Einstein <laughs> to, to, to solve this problem. People will take you in if you have something that they want. Very easy. Yeah? So how, how on earth you want to make yourself valuable to the extent that somebody wants it? Improve your skills. You see, you know when you go outside. Eh, that's that's what I always tell my students. The first, the first challenge in your real life is that not the exam that I gave you or the tricks of your CSP of your uh, OSP or whatever tricks that you had in in in, in the laboratory. No, that is not your true challenges. The true challenges that coming to you is that on the first day you walk out from the gate of USM. That is the first quest, the first challenges that will come to you. If you can overcome that, but uh, my my Sifu used to say to me, Shahrom, you may not be a good student, uh, but you have things that uh, very useful to my group. To work on it, sharpen it. So this is the thing. That's why undergraduates, if you are in the first year or second year or third year, even the fourth year, look into the area. Use that for four years. You see, four years in the university is the most precious time in your life. There is no more four years. 
even though if you go for another degree program and sit for another four years for the second degree, it's not going to be the same like now, this first four years. Because that four years in your life is a life, you know, it's a time where you spend to search for everything. That's why use this four years. It, you know, four years, it sounds long. It sounds long, but in reality, no, it's not long. It's very fast. Joseph, I know him like four years ago. But I felt like I know him yesterday. You see? He is already at the fourth year. I always thinking that he is in the second year. I think I'm getting older. You know, old men, they always think like that. But anyway, the story is that four years, make sure you find your passion to. You know, biotechnology, biomedicine, forensics, or even you do uh, medical science. It's huge. Find one area that you have passion in it. What is passion? Passion is not a, is, is not, is not a rapid thing. It's, it's, a, it's a marathon. Something that uh, you can do it even if you close your eyes. You dream it. You have in mind. Even if the passion is cooking, you know, tell your, your, your parents, is it? I, I'm in the wrong area. Is it? I'm second year, yes, I'm second year. Uh, biomedicine and I'm scoring four, CGPA four, but please move me, you know, remove me from USM or UKM and put me in, in, uh, in, in, in uh, culinary science, you know, because I like cooking. Tell that to your parents. Yeah. Or you can uh, uh, do like uh, many of uh, your friends who finish. Uh, your degree and then do the next, uh, you know, passionate life in, in after the degree. USM, we have uh, very colorful, very colorful uh, career path. Okay? I always, I think all universities, even Prof. Chia from UPN, even Prof. Uh, uh, Susanna from UPN, uh, they will never teach you, you know, everybody, you have to go out and work, get a government. Nobody say that. But most of us, when you, you know, you, you teach the student, you teach them how to live, how to, uh, to solve problems, how to deal with people. You see? So, so this is the thing that uh, you need to put in mind, uh, uh, that uh, you need to have in your mind. Uh, that's why, if you spend four years in the university and when you go out, you still don't have things to do, there is a problem. And I cannot solve that problem. I, I think it's going to be um, uh, another problem that uh, I think the third one could <laughs> as the challenges that I have to put in. After four years in the university, still don't have passion into the uh, into the thing area and Scott uh, for flat for flat all subject got A. So this is another thing. That's why uh, 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 putting the 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 the, the passion is, is very very important. Uh, the job opportunities. You see the job opportunities. Uh, if you do your final year project or your master's or your uh, PhD, always do not afraid to try something new. When I did my PhD, I did in uh, molecular and cellular biology, uh, working on a gene uh, which is related to uh, cancer. 20 years ago, yeah, now it can do anything. So. Uh, when I did my postdoctoral uh, attachment, I did uh, nanotechnology because in mind uh, the future is nanobiotechnology and nanobiomedicine. So the, the same goes with, with with you. Now you need to know what is the technology drive you. You see, so so this is. 
passion is passion, but you need to know also where is going now. Where are the signs is going now? Where are the markets? So this is the thing that you need to have. That's why we have counselor. I think all university we have uh, uh, academic advisor who always very close to you, asking you what your problem. Make use of that. Make use of that. If you still don't have any, you know, in the third year too, you still don't have the area that you are keen of doing. Uh, please consult your academic advisor and uh, discuss. This is the most important. Okay, I think that that is a the job opportunities. Uh, I really uh, cannot tell you job opportunities because uh, uh, in Islam, in, uh, as a Muslim, there are three things that God decides. It's not you who decides. Your death, your jodoh, your you know, your wife, and also your rizki. Rizki means money. You know the the, the thing that you're going to eat. Okay, my sifu used to say to me, Sharum. If nothing goes inside your mouth tomorrow, you will die tomorrow. Okay. So, job is related to the food that you're, you're going to eat. So, I cannot promise you jobs. But I can promise you opportunity. Things you can go further. Uh, I think uh, most of uh, company, eh, biotech company and biomedical company, laboratories, the CEO, the COO, and also the lab managers, they are all either uh biologists or biotechnologists or biomedical scientists at the moment and uh, we have also uh, people who are you know a professor at the professor and mind me usm we have three uh, alumni of biomedicine who is now a medical doctor a medical doctor how they do it well as, I, as what I'm, I'm telling you, you know, you cannot read the future. I will give you one example. Dr. Hania Zain. Dr. Hania Zain is graduated in 2013 by medicine. Because uh, there was, uh, you know, it's hard to get jobs. So she continued a master's degree. She's a first class student. She continued a master's degree under, uh, under our group. And... Uh, after two years, uh, she uh, saw an advertisement inside Utusam Malaysia. At that time, Steve got Utusam Malaysia. You know, offering scholarship to join Perdana University MBBS. It's a medical degree, uh, which is, uh, you know, having a joint uh, uh, venture with John Hopkins University in the United States. So, she applied. She asked me, uh, doctor, uh, boleh tak saya apply? I said, Hania, anything that came across into your mind, apply. If you get it, you can tango your master. You know, your master, you can do during holiday, anything. But jobs, go for that one. Opportunity, go for that one. And but what, what, what with, my, with, my, with my clone, what, what happened to my experiment? Don't bother, you know, with the experiment. Your career path is more important. Your future is more important. I told her. So she went for the scholarship for your interview. And she won. And then she won to me. And she came to me and I said, that, oh, I, I managed to secure a place in Perdana University uh, to do MBBS. So she spent five years to do uh, MBBS. And uh, I think in the second year, second year, too, she finished her, her master's. So she has bachelor, she has master's, and also uh, MBBS. Now she's doing, uh, he's a, she's a, a medical officer in Hospital Ipoh. If I go to Hospital Ipoh, I go and see, always have a, a, a tetari. <laughs> okay, so, so, so that, that, that is the thing. You know, this thing, uh, job opportunities, uh, it's, 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 very, it's very hard to, to, to tell you because it's not my, 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 in, in my power. Uh, but that is the thing. Yeah, okay, Joseph? Uh, this is indeed an eyes opening sharing, Prof. So, as soon we have a time constraint, so, Prof, can we know like what are the advantages of having a postgrad 
postgraduate degree in your own perspective. After this, we will move to the Q&A sections. In, since we have several questions from our audience. Yeah. Okay, thank you, uh, Joseph. Uh, you see, as what I said to you, um, uh, postgraduate is a prerequisite for you uh, to get a better job. Okay. Although many people say uh, that it is not important, but for me and uh, for many uh, for, for us academician, academician is 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 uh, the the things that that we can use to evaluate where are you to go further. So that's why postgraduate uh, degree is very important. Uh, but there are two kinds of postgraduate degree. Uh, if you look into the master's program, you have a coursework, you have a research. So my advice, if you want to do a PhD, okay, try to do your master's uh, by research. Not to say that those who can do coursework cannot do PhD. No, it's not like that. Okay, because there are people who are from the coursework, I mean, uh, master's degree, can do PhD very well. Okay? It's just to say that uh, uh, the stamina of a PhD research required you a master's degree research, especially in molecular genetics. Um, so, uh, but many of the students, they, they don't want to become a researcher. They want to become a lecturer, you know, they want to become a teacher. So they go for a coursework. So, which is fine. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. So you can go into the coursework in your program and get your master's degree. And then after that, you go and embark on your PhD. It's going to be a bit tougher, but it's okay. It's a part of the training in your procedure. Okay, so you need to have a postgraduate degree. Uh, uh, it's just like a prerequisite uh, for you to become a professional as a medical doctor. You know, medical doctor, they need to have a master's degree, you know, the, 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 the specialization in the respective area. Uh, uh, many of the uh, people uh, look into your ability to do work. Uh, if you, you know, if you have something that is really uh, needed by the company, you can go on. It's not a problem. But uh, uh, as far as uh, I am concerned, uh, we in Malaysia, we are going, you know, in, we are developing into a uh, developed uh, develop nation, Negara Maju. So uh, having a degree is very important. Extra degree? extra uh, uh, opportunity. Okay, that's it. Okay, I totally agree with Prof sharing just now. And now we move to the Q&A section. Here's a question from Dinesh Wari. She is a fresh graduate from biomedical science and she plans to continue her master in the future. And she's, she's not sure which mode she, she choose and the aim, she aim to become an academician. So should, should she do the research more or mix more master? Can you uh, list down uh, several pro and con of each of it? Okay. Uh, if you really uh, wants to uh, become a good, you know, uh, a good uh, teacher, you can do your master's uh, mixed mode or coursework. Okay. Uh, if you want to become a good researcher, you see, not many people can teach. I am not a good teacher. In fact, I cannot even uh, teach properly uh, in the early age when I joined USM. And the students are laughing at me because I cannot speak well, I cannot, uh, you know. Because I was I was not trained to be a teacher. If I want I if I want to be a teacher, I won't do my you know bachelor degree in biology. I will join the uh, education faculty and become a teacher. So I was not meant to be a teacher. But I'm telling you now, it's not a teaching stuff. It's something the life experience that I'm telling you. I think 
you can do the same when you are you know 55 nearing your pension time so so this, this is the thing you 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 don't need to uh, uh, think much it's, you just need to know your capability you see research is a marathon especially in this area it's a marathon it's not a sprinter you know sprinter larian 100 meter who is going to be the first one 100 meter pecut pecut no research is not that research is marathon larian 3.5 kilometer you know 12 round only those who really tough who really can take the pressure you know the the havoc you see when you do research uh, if you can do abroad you should do abroad if not then you have to rely with what you have in Malaysia and you know doing this kind of research in Malaysia uh, we are a bit uh, you know a bit uh, year behind because uh, we don't have uh, enzymes we don't have uh, many kids everything needs to be imported uh, from overseas so it will take time if you are not a disciplined researcher or somebody who really uh, really tough uh, then you will be you know you will take a long of time i mean take a lot of time uh, to, to, to finish your master that's why you have to plan you see that's why that's why when you decide if you want to do masters too you have to decide whether you want to be uh, you want to do with the coursework or research to tell you the truth i cannot give you the true answer is everything inside you if you can finish your research uh, within certain time then you can go on but you cannot you know you have uh, a stigma of uh, migraine you cannot take pressure uh, your supervisor cannot you know your supervisor push you a bit you become you know up and down so you better go into coursework you better go into coursework uh, but phd there is no coursework phd everything needs to be researched that's why i'm telling you if you want to do your phd in molecular biology or genetics to play around with something that you can see then you have to have a good stamina that's why I, again your masters need to be research uh, but if you are doing uh, your your masters is not in molecular genetic you know not cloning uh, no expression you know you you wrongly choose vector also it's okay uh, then you go on with it uh, if you really look into the uh, deep into the gene regulation in your process uh, looking into the pathway of uh, whatever cancer regulation uh, then you need to have a very strong i mean very uh, stamina very strong stamina uh, in research that, then you require a master's for uh, by research okay okay so Other questions? questions from tonku faris she asked as a student and a future husband of, of father so how could Prof manage the time between research activity and families? Could you share us a little bit on, based on your own experience? Yeah, you see, uh, I, uh, one of the, uh, when, when I did my, my master's degree, I already with two children. When I did my PhD, I already with three children. So uh, I am basically a mature student. The first and the foremost, your spouse your wife or your husband has to be a very understanding person because you cannot do two things at one time so this is the first thing that's why when i married my wife i told her first thing in the you know in our first date too i i told her i mean not that kind of date i mean when i decided to marry her i told her this is my life i want to do masters i want to do phd i want to do this and then that and that Okay, can you be my wife? <laughs> Something like that, lah. I mean, you know, the, the 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 our spouse need to understand our life. You see, so so a bit discipline. They have to go up early. Uh, they have to send your children to uh, the caretaker. You know, the kindergarten, and then uh, 
because uh, sometimes uh, you have three children or two children or even uh, one children the responsibility needs to be there and uh, one of the bad i think one of the bad things that i have wrongly done in my life was that i brought my children to sleep in the lab uh, so uh, that's why uh, none of my children want to become a scientist because they have used to the lab thing they were very small <laughs> so they always keep on telling me that uh, you know they they, they 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 know the lab first uh, uh, before anything else so they feel like they want to they don't want to be in the lab anymore that's why they choose to become uh, to, to do uh, a, a, a degree in other other uh, area not science so which is okay to me it's okay i mean okay but uh, uh, i think you uh, maybe the reason why i brought my children to my laboratory was that because uh, i want them i want them to to have you know passion in science you know and as a as a father uh, they want to uh, to you know they want their children to follow them uh, but the problem is you see that's what i always tell you in the early of our program most of the things that you want in life the god will not give you directly you see it's not giving you right now i know now i know why i was denied to become a medical doctor because my younger son is okay you is able you see if i was in the medical school 20 years ago and now i am a, a medical consultant i i have to do on call i have to do you know surgery maybe at night and i have no time to be with my uh, disabled son you see so this thing that god didn't tell you 20 years ago so that's why i'm telling all of you just go on with life with whatever things you have excel this is the most important because nobody knows in the future some of you might be the prime minister here that's why i'm telling you uh, my, my 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 student you, see? you are good or you are bad my feelings to you are the same you see if you that's why my students if they are uh, they got fail my exam i smile to them if, if they got a for my exam i smile to them because i i never never put myself you know in the position to say that uh, you fail because you are not good no The good or bad is not me who decide. It's what you do when you go from the, from the university. How you serve the country. How you become, you know, beneficial uh, to people to help people. You see, to serve the nation. This is the thing, and that's why I'm telling my students: do not uh, look down in you. Many of us we felt like, oh, you know, I go. Uh, I lemah, huh? and I cannot do this, I cannot do that. Oh, they are doing so bad. Never compare. Never compare with you and yourself, with your friends and yourself. My Sifu used to say to me, you see, when you go into the market, huh, uh, you sell timun. You know timun? Tembikai. Tembikai. One person on the lorry, you one person down there. Champak. Just throw away. And you are selling egg. Can I? You one person inside the lorry, one person down there. Champa telo, champa eggs. Can I? Can I? So do not compare. Everybody has their own capability, has their own way of life of doing things. You see, appreciate each other, compliment each other. This is the most important. Yes, sir. Yep. Yes. So, I think this is another question from Muhammad Hamza. And he's asked in this difficult time of COVID nineteen pandemic, uh, distant learning are in place. So, what are the alternative that that can un the undergraduate student to do to strengthen their? Okay, uh, you see, um, I have two undergraduate students ongoing, and they are very good students. All first class. Um, our PKP MCO is not totally, you know, like we used to have it in 
June, uh, March, you know, where everybody has to be cordoned in the area. Uh, well, in Selangor, a few places got uh, this this uh, new rule, uh, new by the NPN. It's okay, but there are there are places where you are actually still can move around. Still can move around. So uh, I discussed with my students, my undergraduate final year students. Okay, we sit down. Uh, we are going to do. Uh, we are going to do um, the experiment in silico. You know, we taught you cloning simulation project, how to clone a gene using a uh, computer. Okay, now let's use the things that you learned two years ago. Let's do it now. Just choose a gene. So I asked them to choose a gene from COVID virus so that we can use the gene, um, uh, you know, to become uh, future antigen, future uh, to develop uh, 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 vaccine, for example. Oh, they, they are very happy. You know, they're doing the thing, the good thing. They go and screen AstraZeneca punya, um, uh, candidates, you know, AstraZeneca uh, in Oxford, uh, the company that, uh, the British company uh, that producing uh, vaccine for COVID. And they go and learn about uh, Johnson and Johnson, uh, punya uh, vaccine uh, candidate, looking all the uh, the gene that has been selected. You know, just to make sure that uh, that the gene that they are going to select is not going to be overlap. Okay? And they move very fast. So it's it's uh, you know it's it's something which, which is kita panggil apa tikma. If 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 MCO is not around, uh, we wouldn't have uh, thought of uh, doing this thing. Because uh, uh, at the moment, uh, we have a lot of software, uh, free software. It's free. You don't need to pay any cent on the internet. You just download and then just key in the whatever sequence of the whatever virus. You can, maybe you are not, you're not keen on COVID. Maybe you are looking into the HIV virus. Or, or the bacteria genome or whatever thing that you have in your mind you see so uh, these kind of things uh, uh, you can do but uh, you need to be creative and uh, it has to be uh, it, it, that's why I'm telling you uh, the passion needs to be there the passion needs to be there without the passion you cannot think you only follow SOP and we don't want that kind of student Okay, so we, we, we want our students to become uh, somebody who can think and creative. I think all of you, I am not a good student. I never was a good student. I told you in the earlier program, I never was a good student. And all of you, mind me, if you don't have a 3.8 or 4 CGPA, you won't be in the biomedical program. Most of you are 4 flat or 3.9. So, <laughs> So you are better than me. I think you can do better than me. So this is the thing. Okay, Joseph? Yeah, so this will be the last two questions. And yeah. this question is from Shazni Udin. He said that how can one find the patient in biomedical science study if uh, if this course is feel like uh, hitting one's tougher and what did what, what did motivate a uh, prof in continuing in this particular field? Okay, prof briefly uh, answer the question so that we can move to our last question before we end our session today. Okay, uh, you see, I hate to tell you the truth. I, 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 I hate genetics. The reason why I hate genetics was that because it has Mendelian genetics and also the recombination, you know, the Drosophila recombination, the mating experiment. You need to do calculation because I am very poor. My math is not good. I never score my math. Kada lulus saja. So I don't like um, genetic. But how I make myself keen, you know, have interest into genetic. That's what my Sifu used to say. You know, you look at things, always you go around. Never look at one area. 
Never look in one dimension. Look at many di dimension. You have to find in your the subject that you hate most. There must be something that trigger your interest. For example, in genetics, I am very, you know, I am very uh, passionate in the engineering of genes. I'm very good at that. I know I I I like to memorize the recession site. You know, I like to. Uh, uh, to, to, to memorize the isoskizomas of enzyme, you know, this enzyme card cannot depend that. So I, I, I'm, I'm very good at that. So uh, I use that to overcome and minimize the fear of that uh, subject. And at the end of the day, you get it done. You see, when you do uh, subjects, uh, they give you like five questions, only one question you do not answer. Other four you have to answer. So you need to be, uh, you know, you have to think about doing something like that. Do not look at the uh, weakness point. Look at the things that uh, can trigger your interest. Okay, Kwa, uh, Joseph? Right, so this will be the, our last question for today's section. So this question is from Maya Raman. He, he asked whether the publication is a real indicator of how good a researcher in academia and whether prof will feel pressure to publish as many papers in academic work. Yeah. Okay, um, publication is important. Okay, that is the only way uh, you can tell people what are your uh, contribution to science. Okay, so publication is very important. I'm not telling it's not important, but it is not the only uh, important thing in academia. As for me, I always look into the uh, uh, aspect of uh, usefulness of the knowledge. You see, I can publish many things uh, due to all the findings that, that, that I have. But is it going to be, you know, useful to the to the people? You see, um, this is the, the the things that you need to, to know. Uh, publication is important, but it is not the only things that important in your life. That's why uh, in academia, if you join uh, uh, academia, you become a lecturer. Uh, there are KPIs that you need to fulfill for your promotion. One of them is publication. But you have also other KPIs to, to fulfill. So this is the thing that you need to know. Publication is important, but the most important is that how your publication can really you know, uh, be used uh, to, uh, to show the improvement of science and so on and so forth. So this is the most important thing. You just look into the um, into the uh, establishment of the uh, double helix DNA. Okay, in 1940s, early 1950s, uh, there were a race to postulate what is the structure of this double helix DNA. Uh, Linus Pauling in America, you know, the, the person who uh, got two Nobel Prize. So he was the the person who uh, really uh, look into uh, the, the the structure of DNA, and then there are groups in the US, uh, in, in 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 England, in in, in the UK. Uh, 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 J D Watson, you see, and also Francis Crick. So they 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 uh, uh, presented their finding. If you look into the history of science. Uh, uh, it's quite weird for the DNA uh, finding because uh, when uh, Rosalind Franklin, which was working that time with Professor uh, Wilkins, look at uh, uh, Cambridge, at the King's College, Cambridge, Watson and Crick is in the audience. When Rosalind Franklin showing the picture of that, uh, the diffraction, you know, DNA, both uh, 
uh, what's the next is in the audience. It's just like a teacher giving a lecture on the idea, and the person who discovered the idea, you know, who got the Nobel Prize on the idea spoken by the teacher, is uh, in the audience, is the student. So you see the importance of knowledge, of knowledge. And there are things that that is not uh, that is not quickly comes to you. It comes after many many years. If you still remember the story of Dr. Barbara McClintock, Dr. Barbara McClintock is a scientist who uh, who discovered uh, the jumping element, the transposon. She was working with transposon in 1950s, 1960s. But she won Nobel Prize in 1990 something. She passed away in 1991. She won the Nobel Prize very late. After how many years? So, uh, publication is important, but the knowledge is actually the true things that drive the movement of science. And to tell you the truth, even the Nobel Prize, Nobel Prize, eh, Nobel laureate. Uh, there was a Nobel laureate uh, uh, came to Malaysia. I was not in the in the news, but uh, I uh, somebody uh, told me the story. Uh, there was one question raised by the audience. You know, uh, Professor, uh, sir, did you plan for when you won a Nobel Prize, uh, Nobel laureate? Uh, did you plan your life, you know, to become a Nobel laureate? He just laughed at the uh, that that person. He said that he, he was not even uh, planned to be a scientist. <laughs> How can he can he can plan to to, to win another side? You see, again, you cannot read the future. Nobody knows. Maybe one of you will win another prize one day. Nobody knows. So this is the thing that uh, you need to to put in your mind. You know, publication is important, but it's not it's not uh, the whole things. Uh, in life that you have to go on to. Okay. Thank you. All right. I, it looks like we have covered most of our questions. So great. Uh, let's have another quick poll so, uh, and a survey on the satisfaction of today's section. Uh, just a very quick one. Yep. So can you guys please fill in your feedback on today's section? And we will have a 30 seconds countdown before we close the poll. All right. All right. It seems that, um, most of our audience is highly satisfied with today's sections and the content is highly relevant for the, uh, the on the career audience. So before we end our sections today, can I spare you a minute or two to do an advertisement on our last MX 2.0 section, yep. which is going to be conducted on 11 November 2020, Wednesday, same time, same platform, and we will meet we will have Ms. Jamuna, who is uh, assist an assistant director of health, our health services in Sunway Mikasa. And we appreciate you being here. Thanks again for joining us today. And we will see you next time. Till we meet again. Cheers and stay safe. Bye-bye.